But uh, Chris Robinson's joining us this morning to take a look at currencies and treasuries. He's here this Monday morning. Chris, thanks for sharing part of yours with us. Let's pick up where we just left off. We were talking about the U.S. dollar tying it into gold more so. I want to talk about how we've seen rates backing off some into the end of last week, following some of the inflation data that's got rate cut expectations, push back some per comments from Fed officials. Yeah, but we won't really know until Friday. Friday was going to be the reset button. That's going to be the number that really matters. I think that you could have a Fed speaker talk every day. and The jobs report, really, you mean, on Friday? Yeah, the yeah. jobs report. The, the first Friday of every month. Sadly, we didn't get it on uh, this previous Friday, but they pushed it for a week, I guess, for, you know, uh, so everybody had the weekend to get ready. But that's the one number that really matters because that's the most important thing. Now, when it comes out, everybody's going to argue about it. They're going to dig into it and say part time versus people with two jobs. Et cetera, et cetera. But it's it is the single easiest thing for everybody to focus on. And I was looking at the notes that you sent me. I mean, and trust me, the Bank of Canada, the mm -hmm. Bank of uh, Japan, you know, the ECB, they're all watching what's happening in America because America is the one economy that's, you know, relatively the strongest. So you've got Germany that's in a recession. Uh, you've got Canada, you know, flirting with a recession. Um, so UK, for that matter. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there and, you know, there's, it's that expression from that bad 80s movie. It's the, it, it's the dog with the least fleas. Right. Yeah. So that's that's really what it comes down to. And that's why it is so important. And that's why, you know, back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there's guys that would just fly in to trade the number and then they would go do other things. I mean, yeah. this we're, we're getting back <laughs> to that time where the unemployment number is really going to rock the, the bond market. So it's, you know, for everybody out there that's a, a trader or wants to be a trader or imagines they're a trader. These these uh, Friday unemployment reports, uh, there, there's a ton of opportunity there, ton of risk, but yeah. a ton of opportunity. Yeah. I yep. forgot about those days, Chris, the the packed pit days where the guys would come in a tough day's work, right, where they'd come in and trade the number for 30 minutes and then yeah. get the heck out of there. But yeah. talk to us because I, I'd agree with you in terms of the jobs report on Friday. I'd imagine especially after that income number last week, personal income and spending, the income component of it came in a little bit higher than expected at 1%. Um, uh, but also, right, you did mention the ECB we've got this week, the BOC. So as we gear up for these central bank decisions here, yeah, there's going to be a lot of focus on these treasuries and on the currencies. Dollar, though, kind of hanging out in the middle of this range that we've been in basically for the last year. It seems pretty comfortable just below 104 here. Well, you know, I on the weekends I do uh, I go through like about 15 or 16 markets just to get you know, keep an eye on things. And the dollar is in a huge wedge. Yeah. If it pops up, if it pops above 105, it's big. If it pops below 101, it's a wedge. Anybody out there with a, a ruler or a charting program can see what I'm talking about. And we are coming to the apex of that of that wedge. Now, when we break out, it, uh, it comes in. You know, it probably is going to happen on Friday. Now, it may be a big breakout. It may be a feeble breakout. It may be a head fake. Mm -hmm. But I would watch those levels. And again, if you're watching this show, you're looking for movement. Movement equals opportunity. If the dollar does start to reprice, because in general, we have been trending lower since the 20. 22 uh that was a a 22 year high in 2022 say that five times fast um you know so that's the key now we did pop down and, and make a six month low earlier you, you you uh throw it all together and you know we're in this range but those are the levels i would watch 105 versus 101 there's no guarantees but i think it's what the market's going to reprice on and you know it's it's going to be very very sensitive also to what's going on with the 10-year yield People are concerned Are we going to go back to where we were in October or we, we just, you know, hit the 5% yield in the 10 year. And then, you know, a month later in December, we were at three, nine. So we're kind of hanging here at four, three and the market is waiting to see. Um, they've priced in the cuts. Now is the Fed going to actually come through? Well, we'll see. It's a, there's a, again, with every risk, with every unknown, there's an opportunity. And um, one thing these markets have given us over the past two years, it's very technical levels to watch. So you have entry and exit points. I don't care what your your synopsis is or your theory is or you know why you're getting long or getting short. But these these uh, markets are giving you good specific areas at least to concentrate on. Um, so you're not. Uh, I think anybody out there that is is uh, trying to you know hedge or trade, um, watch those key levels. Um, they don't always work, but boy, when you when everything lines up like this. 
um, there's certainly things to watch. So that would be my advice. Chris, I like the key levels that you brought to our attention there, 101, 105 in the U.S. dollar. Yes. Uh, and we looked at the chart while you were uh, bringing those levels to our attention. It has been very much range bound, right? We've been in a uh, 10, we'll call it, well, what was it, 107 down to uh, 99 roughly. And here right. we are again right around 103. But you also pointed the fact that we've been trending lower off those highs that we saw back in uh, 2022. Let's take a look at that because yes. it was all the way up at 114. That was back in uh, the fall of 2022 when we saw yes. the tenure up around uh, uh, that 5% level come off. Well, most more recently up around the 5% level, but come back right. off uh, quite a bit here. Uh, talk to us because, you know, we were looking at the yield chart as we started just started kind of flipping to this chart here and they're very similar right yields have come off recent yes. spikes yields on a more short-term basis here but uh, you mentioned that risk and you mentioned some of the opportunity that's out there I'd imagine uh, if you're trading Bitcoin that's what you're focused on those two oh. things right because we've seen quite a bit there with the dollar more and a bit of a range bound type trade compared to crypto there's been a fair amount of risk if you've been short this thing right the, it's been straight up ultimately but a lot of opportunities we near these all-time highs as well and come off those lows after yeah. the ETF approval you know, whatever Bitcoin is, you know, and, and um, I agree with my perspective of Bitcoin is it's basically a commodity. You, you might as well be looking at greasy wool or back in the day they used to trade onions. Everything has a price. Everything has a story. Uh, it's great. If you want to trade something that's moving, here's your Bitcoin. And what, what matters most to me is the old uh, all-time high. I think it's 69,350. Mm -hmm. Got to remember, some, somebody bought it there and then wrote it down to sub 15,000. So Ouch. If everybody's giddy, giddy, giddy right now, um, I call it the Thanksgiving trade. Thanksgiving one year, we were at all-time highs. The next year, we were down to 15,000. So all the people now that are pounding their chests like Tarzan, you know, in a 1930s movie, uh, I would say, where were they back when we were at 15 grand? Um, so be very, very careful. People get emotional. People start talking their position. Um, but again, what are we looking for? We're looking for opportunity. Everybody knows. If we get north of 69.5, it's going to be new highs. People are going to be, uh, you know, taking a shot, either trying to get long up there or short against it. Uh, but again, as far as I'm concerned, you need to treat Bitcoin like it's any other commodity. Um, people are as, as kind of establishing, you know, religious context to it almost and getting their like profits and, you know, <laughs> pro proselytizers. I, it's just something to trade people. Well, I want to take a look at a couple charts real quick because I've got uh, the 50-day moving average here, the 200-day moving average Bitcoin. You can see that we've basically just trampolined off of it. It was right yes. around this 40,000 level. We haven't seen the 200-day uh, moving average since October of last year. And I just want to show you one more chart because, whoops, hold on. This is the chart I wanted to show you. So we've come off those lows from uh, yeah. last, or last year, beginning of last year, in the fall of 2022. Uh, yeah. Around 16,000, you can see again quite the move up, and everything above 21K is invalidated. That trend lower the left side of your screen, you can see the all time high there as well. Chris, lots to focus on here, whether you're talking currencies or treasuries or crypto, uh, but across the board here, uh, um, uh, lots to focus on this week. It's going to be a busy one. Thanks can't, for. Can't, don't forget about gold. Gold's finally above 2073. You know, that's another, another thing to watch. It does trade like a currency. So there's lots of opportunity here as we you know, start out March. That was my chart of the day today. It's on our radar for sure. It's a bright blip on ours. Uh, Chris, thanks for sharing part of your Monday morning with us. Chris Robinson from TGM Institutional Services. Now